So a bunch of YouTubers and media outlets just got their hands on with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and were able to provide us with some brand new information and some brand new looks into what these games are going to offer for players. Now this is not going to be a complete run through of everything that we've learned, but I picked out probably the most interesting pieces to me and I want to talk about them for a little bit. So let's jump right into things. So I'm going to need you all to excuse me a little bit in this video. If you didn't check the community tab earlier in the week, I have been dealing with COVID. Unfortunately, I have just pretty much today gotten my voice back and this is the same day that previews came out. So I wanted to hop on, hopefully, and give some early thoughts on what we've gotten from some of these preview events. I have five things that really stood out to me from a lot of the videos that YouTubers have put together on their thoughts, a lot of the things that some of the news outlets have covered, and just give my thoughts on those. So the first of that is camera control, and one of the things that a bunch of people made note of is that you are no longer able to run around in a Pokemon battle. Your player is static, your player stands in the spot it was in when you encountered the Pokemon and when the battle uh, went on, but you can control the angle of the battle. So your camera angle can be altered by you with the flick of your joystick and you can see the battle through different angles. Now, personally, I absolutely love this feature. I think that the ability for your character to move around in Legends Arceus while in battle is a little overblown and overhyped. I made note of it when I reviewed Legends Arceus that I absolutely loved it. But seeing how they're making use of the camera angle in this game, I think this is a better implementation. Being able to see the battle in different views throughout the game and being able to change it at will, I think is a really neat way to keep battles fresh. And it's a really neat way to not make certain battles feel too clunky. A lot of issues in 3D Pokemon has been that the size of the Pokemon can sometimes negatively impact the way the battle looks. Sometimes the Pokemon is too large in the view that your camera is taking and it kind of makes the battle feel a lot less interesting. So being able to change the camera ang angle at will in these games I think is a really nice feature. One of the other things that a lot of people have made note of also is the frame rate. And I want to address this quickly because I've seen a lot of outlets have a lot to say about the frame rate. One thing that needs to be said when talking about it is that they were very clear that this is a development build that people were able to play. We have made note in the past on this channel and other outlets have made note of it as well that the Japanese trailers and the English trailers have used different builds of the game so much so that there's different shots we can see run at a higher frame rate in the Japanese trailer than we do in the English trailer. This could very well be the case that the build that people were getting a preview of is not the most recent build and the game does run smoother than it does in these previews. But I think it also needs to be noted that a lot of Establishments have said that the, the frame rate is disappointing, that the, the frame rate and the pop in of some of the elements of the overworld took a lot of people out of the experience. And I think that's going to be something that we're going to have to watch in the lead up to the game's launch. Is there a day one patch that fixes a lot of this, that fixes the major problems as we've seen with previous Pokemon games, or is the open world a lot rougher in Scarlet and Violet than it has been in previous games? The lag of the Pokemon games, the frame rate, the resolution in docked versus in handheld mode or in a handheld mode has always been a question with the 3D era of Pokemon. We're never going to get away from it. It's already always going to be addressed in these previews. We're always going to be hypercritical because of where we think Pokemon needs to be as a franchise versus where it is. So I want to make a note that some outlets are emphasizing this and saying that it is an issue, while others are saying that it's not as big of a deal. We need to be careful with this. We need to take a look about how this leads up to the rundown. We're a month away from these games coming out, and this is an issue that outlets are noting. So we will see. I will say that in the open world, I think it is better than some outlets are making it out to be. 
I think one of the biggest issues for me is in the towns, how the frame rate in these towns that are connected to the open world handle the pop in and handle the intense usage of the Switch's hardware. This is where I think the biggest impact is going to be for me personally. So we'll have to wait and see how the game takes shape up to release. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel now, of course. Subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you, and if you want to go to the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. Another thing that I really liked has to do with the titans that are all around the overworld of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It appears that you're going to have to either beat them multiple times, or they will run away from you and move around from you, so it is more difficult to take them, take them down. They might be in specific locations, but they are not going to specifically stay in that one location. So I think that's really good to making titans more dynamic, making the experience of beating titans and getting the treasures that they're hiding in front of uh, a lot more interesting and fun and exciting than just running up to one specific point, beating the big bad Pokemon, collecting the treasure, and moving on. So that I really like. Another thing about the overworld is shiny Pokemon. Now, Serebi got to handle the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games for himself for the website, and he was able to actually run into an overworld shiny. Did not get footage of it, but were able to confirm that just like in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and just like in Pokemon Legends Arceus, shiny Pokemon will render in the overworld. You can catch them, run into them in the overworld, and then capture them and get them on your team and add them to your collection. So you, can, you do not have to run into the Pokemon to see if it ends up being shiny like you did in Pokemon Sword and Shield. This is what Legends Arceus was and what Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were, which is good to see. A question that didn't get answered by the Nintendo representatives at these events was how this feature would work in multiplayer. So if you have three of your friends running around an overworld with you and you run into a shiny Pikachu, does everyone get to catch the shiny Pikachu? Does it only render for one specific person? Is it dynamic? So you can run into a shiny Pokemon, but it might not be the same for someone else in their version of the game. Can the shiny Pokemon be caught by multiple players? If one person catches it, is does they get to keep it? Can you not access it? How do shiny Pokemon work with regards to multiplayer? They did not provide any answers on this. If I had to guess, it's going to be one shiny Pokemon per instance, and whoever get, runs into it can catch it, unless you can catch multiple of the Pokemon per instance. So we'll see how shinies are handled with this. I think it'll be fun. I think multiplayer shiny hunts could be an exciting new addition in Scarlet and Violet, and a lot of shiny hunters who stream these on Twitch and YouTube could have a lot of fun with it. So I think that'll be cool to see and eventually get an answer to. Another thing is overworld Pokemon actions. This is something that I was a little bit nervous to see in Scarlet and Violet. One of the things that I think Legends Arceus did a great job of was make the Pokemon feel more as a part of the world itself. They were always doing something and moving around in the world and they were kind of going about their day unbeknownst to what your trainer was doing. So when you see a bunch of Pokemon just kind of standing around in the overworld of Scarlet and Violet, it starts to concern you a little bit of, oh, are we going back to what they looked like and what their models were in Sword and Shield? And luckily, while it is a little bit similar to the way Pokemon Sword and Shield handled their overworld models, they do have a bit of personality baked in. A lot of people reference the fact that some Pokemon would move closer to you when you got up to them, others would run away. Some Pokemon would burrow or fly away from you or fly towards you when you got near them. There were different um, motions and movements uh, coded in for different Pokemon species. So they're not all static and don't all do the same exact thing, which I think is good to see. One of the moments we saw in the trailer, I think back in, it was either the September 7th trailer or the late August trailer was that the terrestrialized Pokemon out in the overworld that you ran up to and battled just kind of sat there and didn't move. A couple of the YouTubers who had their hands on events noted that when they played the game, the Pokemon moved around its environment. It was in that same general area, but it had a little bit more life to it. 
which I think is just a small touch that makes the game feel more alive, makes the Pokemon feel like more of an active part of the ecosystem and adds a lot to the gameplay. So that was really good to see as well. I think a lot of these features bode well for Scarlet and Violet and point to the fact that the mechanical changes and the mechanical implementations made in the ninth generation of Pokemon are positive ones that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. My concern is how the overall uh, package of the game with the frame rate and the resolution and how the experience is meshed with the story. How much will that get in the way or hurt a lot of these features? That remains to be seen. Some of the reporters and YouTubers who got, have gotten to play the game thus far seem to be divided on that front. We'll find out more. The games are coming out in a month. I'm sure we're going to get a bunch of more trailers and we're going to get a much better idea when reviews start to drop and when the game inevitably leaks and gets out there like two and a half weeks early, what state the game is actually being shipped in. So if you enjoyed this video and you are excited for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, let me know down in the comments section below and leave a like on this video if you want to see more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos like it in the future. I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.